Welcome to the season finale of uh, 3ds Max. Let's learn 3ds Max season one. The focus has been learning how to and perfecting the most boring yet most important aspect of uh, of doing VFX, which is how to properly set up a render in order to actually composite a 3D element into a shot. We haven't been doing the fun stuff. We haven't been doing the schnazzy like how to break glass, how to do this, how to do that. But the point is, by doing this and perfecting this, we're going to be able to work with all sorts of things, whether it be from fire to dynamics to breaking stuff to compositing it and crazy things. Whatever model you can find, you now know how to do it and like make it look real. I decided to come up to the street today, and as like kind of like my, my gift to you, we'll do an exciting one. Uh, we're going to be putting a helicopter into this shot, and we're going to be shooting it with a uh, with a dog turd. I'm not going to be going into exact detail how to do. Um, know that at some point down the line, we're going to do a helicopter episode. And we're also gonna be doing a like, we're gonna be doing a number of tracking episodes where we do full 3D tracking, uh, 2D tracking, um, 2.5D tracking, as well as different combinations above. The reason why I'm jumping to this is to kind of show you guys, you have to start thinking with that left side of your brain um, for creative ways to finish shots. There's, there's always, there's the right way, which we'll call the ILM way. And then there's also, um, there's the wrong way, obviously ways that don't work at all. And then there's this like kind of middle ground where it's we do way, do things in technically the wrong way, technically ways that aren't perfect, but we know that there's a margin of error that's so little that you'll never be able to tell the difference. Because in the end of the day, if you do something the right way or you do it the wrong way, but your final result is indistinguishable from the right way, then I'd call that also the right way. So the idea for the shot is I'm gonna have Heldine walking with my dog Bandit. She's gonna be walking with her from side left to right. So this, this, is, this shot is gonna feature both handheld motion as well as uh, as well as just me translating through space from left to right. I'm gonna start on her here. I'm gonna start walking. She's gonna enter into frame, and then the hel you're gonna see the helicopter back there the entire time. And as she's gonna stop with Bandit, at which point the camera is gonna come to a stop, and she's gonna fire a doggy turd right at that helicopter, and the helicopter is gonna fly out for discernment. On to the interior portion of this tutorial. I have already gotten started on this file, so I'm not gonna be showing you every single step of the way of what to set up because you guys should already know how to do it. For this shot, we're only going to take a single frame and render the helicopter out. Now, we have two choices here because we have two different levels of zoom. The helicopter is going to be in frame pretty much the entire time. So the frame I'm going to choose is uh, this one right when Helding fires the poo right, right here. So this is already zoomed in, so it'll allow me to render at lower resolution. Now, if I wanted the helicopter to like, fly in the frame in the beginning when it zoomed out, then I'd, I'd select one of these earlier frames when it's, when it's more zoomed out. But I'm going to send the helicopter hovering there. Basically, my plan is the helicopter's hovering there, kind of like turn like... Um, she's gonna come out here, she's gonna aim, it's gonna zoom in it, and she's gonna fire the poo, it's gonna hit it, and it's gonna go like, a little bit, and then it's gonna go and fly off. What, Bandit? You wanna sit in my lap while I do the tutorial? I um, seem to be getting a bath while we're doing this tutorial. Good girl. Good girl. Okay, let's do, let's do computer work. Uh, position the camera in there, lined up, modeled the, uh, the geometry for the ground and the two walls, put my two balls in the scene. Uh, materials, I made the projection map material for this. this, is the same way we've been doing it the whole time with the camera map as well as the bitmap set to explicit map channel. And then I did my two textures for my, my reflective ball and my solid gray ball. I've already set up the, the overrides to have the sky, the, uh, the panorama for reflections, as well as the background just in there for viewing pleasure. So if we hit render right now, it looks like this. If you have any questions about that, go through the previous tutorials. You guys should all be at this point now where you can pretty much set up a scene for lighting, you can find a model online, you can model a model yourself, you can put pretty much anything you want to the scene. So this one, we're gonna be importing a model instead of just these, uh, just these balls, which we've already been looking at quite a bit. Import, merge, I'm gonna open up the Apache scene file that we have pre-built here in V-Ray, and I'm gonna import that all to the scene, import. Boom, Apache to show up in the scene. Hell yeah, now we're having fun. This shot, the first thing I did is to change the length of it. So it's, uh, it's 465 frames long is what it's gonna be. And so here's where we're getting to video stuff, guys, as promised. Um, by default, your shot's 100 frames long, as you can see along the bottom of the screen. We're gonna change this end time to 464. So setting it to 464, so that's 465 frames total as well as we're changing the frames per second. It's actually already by default at 30, which is what I shot it at. Okay, so the first thing with a helicopter, go to this link tool up here, select and link. We're gonna select and we're gonna link the top rotor to the helicopter's body, boom. And we're gonna select the tail rotor and link it to the helicopter's body. Now, when I go to move the helicopter, the blades move with it. So what this allows us to do specifically for a helicopter is we're able to animate rotation of the blades without animating the helicopter's fuselage. And then once we have those blades rotating, later on we can independently just animate the helicopter's fuselage and the blades will come along with it. 
I've already done some, uh, some Google research here and uh, look up how fast does an Apache's helicopter blade rotate. The blade needs to rotate 75 times over the course of this 465 frame shot. What we did that is just looked up on, on like Wikipedia, you know, how, many, how fast does the blade rotate, did a little math to figure out if it's this many seconds long, this is how many times it should go, and the answer is 75. So we're going to go into the motion panel and we're going to go over to rotation right here and basically we're going to assign a different controller to it. By default most of yours are going to be on Euler XYZ for rotation. I'm going to switch it to TCB rotation. Check this box down here which is rotation wind up. And by doing rotation wind up now this allows us to rotate more than one time around without just taking the shortest distance to it and so we're actually able to do 75 solid rotations of it. We're going to go over to the last frame of this shot hit auto key on here and go over to rotation and we're going to start, we're going to start winding. If we go through it, you can see the whole shot, the helicopter blade is spinning. We're going to turn off auto key and we can just hit play here and we can watch as the helicopter blade spins at basically a realistic rate. One more blade to do, we're going to go to the tail rotor, we're going to go here, we're going to change this from view, we're going to change it to local, which makes it so we can rotate on its local axis, TCB rotation and rotation windup is checked. Okay, so we're going to hit auto key again, go to the last frame. Now the, the tail rotor actually rotates a lot faster than the main rotor, so that, this one goes for 355 full rotations. So that's going to be a crazy amount. If you're looking right here on the screen, you can see that we could type it into any time. We're not going to. We're not going not to. Not on the season finale of season one of 3DS Max tutorials. We're doing this by hand. We're going to crank it all the way up to 150. All the way. Both the blade and the tail blade, both are rotating properly. Awesome. And the cool thing here, so we can take our, take our helicopter, move it up into the sky. Look at that, we got a helicopter sitting up there. Let's put it in the main viewport. Flop, 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 flop. Boom, helicopter rotating. And now, hit render. Oh, Apache! Helicopter up in the air, no motion blur yet, sitting there, looking good. Let's get that camera motion, as promised. We're doing a, doing a kind of a hacky way to do a, a 3D track, but it's going to be an effective way to do a 3D track. What's up? What's up? You want to get on? Run free. Okay, we're going to make the camera animate so it's moving over to the approximation of the motion there. Let's pop back over to After Effects and consult our reference footage. We've got the shot trimmed here. Helding's walking out with Bandit. Camera sliding at a constant right to the right and eases to a stop. Eases to a stop at about, let's see here, about frame 120 here. So what we're going to do is go to frame 120 and we're going to create a keyframe for our camera. So we're going to right click on here create keyframe, position, rotation, scale, whatever. Okay, and then we're gonna go back to the first frame, hit auto key, and we're gonna slide this camera over about, eh, let's do three meters. So you see what this creates is a little bit of parallax as the camera moves. Now the camera right now, it's by default easy easing in, in and out. We're gonna go into here, curve editor. Here's a graph of what the camera's motion is actually doing. We're gonna pop into here, and we're actually gonna change this so that this one is gonna be linear. So now the camera's gonna start at a constant rate and then ease to a halt, just like it did in real life and should be about right. So it slides over and stops. We're gonna put the target distance of the camera approximately where the helicopter is, right over there. So now this camera's actually gonna rotate slightly. So you see as the scene comes out, we're getting a slight bit of rotation in there because that's compensating for the parallax that we'd have from Heldeen walking across the street. Now, we've got our camera motion going, so the camera kind of slides over to the side there comes to a halt. We're going to be adding in all the handheldness of the camera later in After Effects. We've got the cam we've got this helicopter sitting there. Now all that's left is to animate it. So what do we want this helicopter to do? Helene's walking out there. I'm going to kind of have it just be in place because the helicopter's never still coming down, rotating. It's going to get, it's going to get, the poo's going to hit the windshield and then it's going to like rock a little bit and fly out of there. So let's do a quick hand animation of that. Play. Helicopter's, helicopter's loading the shot. You got to put your CG goggles onto a vision of what it's going to look like when it's done. Gets hit by the poo. Oh, and it's going to fly out of there. you. I don't shoot poop at us. Boom. Done. I'm not even going to tweak it. That's our final, final helicopter animation. Time to render it out. I'm going to polish off the last little details of the scene, which you guys all know how to do already. Put the V-Ray material wrapper on there. Click on matte surface. Make sure shadows and effect alpha are on there. Alpha contribution negative one. And apply that material to the three things. There you have it. We have our helicopter there. Our two, our two beautiful balls there still. The scene is mostly ready to render. We're going to take those balls out at the last second. Um, now the interesting thing for this one is we actually aren't going to do a shadow pass because there's at no time is the helicopter low enough where to actually cast a shadow on the scene. We'll select the three, go into there, object properties, and not visible to camera. 
Run those out. Perfect. So now they're out of the alpha completely. All we have is a helicopter. Helicopter is not a helicopter without motion blur. Head over to here. I'm going to go into V-Ray camera. Very simple in V-Ray. Turn motion blur on. Now, there's a few different controls here that you should know. Uh, duration in frames. Uh, basically, when I shot this shot, I shot it in 1 over 96. So that should be about, it's about a quarter of a frame per, uh, per sample. So we're going to do 0.25. Actually, I'm going to do it 0.5 because the final shot, I'm going to actually turn up the motion blur re-edited in there, as if I shot it in half a frame of motion blur. Geometry samples are super important doing a helicopter. I'm going to crank it up. That's because that's the, main, that's the number of samples that it does to get that rotational motion blur. OK, so we got a helicopter with motion blur in the blades on the proper alpha. Everything's looking good. Take those uh, beautiful balls. We're going to hide them. Enable the frame buffer. Uh, get resolution from max, yes. Uh, render to V-Ray image raw file, browse. So we're going to render it out as an image sequence, basically a, se a sequence of EXR images, very long sequence of EXR images. And then in After Effects, we're going to recombine those uh, images back into one video clip. Because the problem is if you try to render it out as a video, as, as it already being a video, if you crash in the, in the middle of it, you're going to lose it. But if you render it out as images, if you crash in the middle of it, you at least have every single frame that you've finished up to that point. So you can restart it. And trust me, uh, crashes happen more often than you'd like to think. Helicopter in the background. Alpha's clean, helicopter's sitting right there. Now that everything's looking good, everything's ready to render. Turn off use map here, so we're rendering in a black background. Last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna switch this from single time output in the common tab here over to active time segment. We're gonna render out all 465 frames. This is gonna take, this is gonna take a fair bit of time. Save your file before you hit render, always. Render, okay. Now that we've hit render, we're just gonna double check that over in our, uh, over in our files here, indeed, our EXR files are being written over to it, so it's being saved. Um, nothing left to do here, but wait. Hard part's over. Did all the CG, did all that, rendered it all out over the weekend, got a haircut, everything's looking good. Let's open up After Effects, and uh, I'm gonna show you guys our final results here. And let's first take a look at this Apache. There it is on black by default. We can check this little box here, boom. See that on a perfect little alpha? Play, oh, looks awesome. Helicopters are my favorite thing to do in CG because they always turn out awesome. Here's the chopper. Um, you see it's just sitting there right now in the shot. Obviously, we need to complete our track. So the helicopter, when I did it, was supposedly is down the street somewhere around where this white van is. Create a new null object. Null object, we're going to basically use that to, we're going to track the scene, and then we're going to basically parent the Apache to the null object. So wherever the null object moves, the Apache moves. Double click that layer. We're gonna to go to track motion. We're gonna do position, rotation, and scale because we have that zoom in there. And I'm gonna go all the way over to the end of the shot. Since it starts zoomed in, it'll be easier for me to track from that end and then go to the other end. When basically between these two points, it's gonna track the position on one, it's gonna track the position on the other one, and based on the position relative to it, it's gonna be able to figure out rotation as well as how far apart they are, it's gonna be able to figure out scale. We're gonna hit the play button in reverse. It's gonna start tracking through the shot. And that wraps up the track. Okay, so now we've tracked through the entire shot. We have this 2D track, which is gonna basically solve for position, rotation, and scale. We're going to make sure our target for that is null number two, and we're gonna apply it to null number two right now by saying apply. It's gonna say X and Y, you say okay. It goes in there. So now you notice the only difference is that our null object right there is now moving along, has animation data to move along with that. Remember we framed it up based on the frame right when the poo got shot of the dog? So we're gonna go and we're gonna take our helicopter and we're gonna kind of position our helicopter in that frame where we want it. Once we've moved into place, we're gonna hit parent. We're gonna parent that to the null, boom. And so now as the null moves, the helicopter moves. We go through, we watch, and boom. Helicopter is sitting up there, let's hit play. Zoom, zoom. Perfect. You always gotta do sound effects with your mouth. It helps, it helps the VFX goggles work. So we had motion blur on when we were rendering. However, we didn't have the motion of the camera yet. We just had that simple slide over. Now we've got the shakiness of the camera. So we have to add that motion blur in. So in After Effects, we do that is toggle the switches and modes, turn this box on, and make sure this box is turned on. And we have the motion blur on. Now as the helicopter moves, we get, we get actually realistic motion blur. You'll see it on the zoom here, especially. Motion blur, perfect. We have to do a little bit of color correction to get it sitting in there just perfectly. So when I look at this, I see that oh, it's, it looks like it's a little bit oversaturated. So I'm gonna take that layer basically and go into effects and presets here, go into hue saturation, put that over into the Apache, drop the saturation down a touch. It's a little bit too sharp overall, I'd say. 
So I'm going to go in there and give it a blur of probably a half of one. Drop fast blur under there. You don't need to deal with all those other slower blurs. We do fast blur around here. 0.5, boom, takes a little bit of the crispiness off of it. Looks good. And then the third and final thing to complete this effect, this is totally just like not really what this lesson's about, but we got to do, we got to do the poo. New solid, I'm going to make it poo brown right there. Okay, done. Going to do a quick little simple mask. Nice poo shape. Gross. In order to be able to control what field of view your camera is, you have to make a camera and add to the scene. Focal length, make that 40, like 45. Take that layer, turn it into a 3D layer, and drop a 3D box on there. Turn it so it's aimed towards the helicopter, and then position. Put it right where Bandit's booty would be. All right, so position. We have it lined up with the one position from the butt. Then we're going to go forward to where the helicopter reacts to it. And then position, we're going to push this way the heck away. All right, so once we have our line or trajectory going there, we're going to give it a little bit of arc to so lob it into there. Move this handle upwards for that. Zoom in. Move that handle upwards for that. And we got a pretty good little poo arc there. And there you have it. The crude, lewd, but pooping on a helicopter shot that you guys always wanted to make. <laughs> That's a really janky looking turd. <laughs> okay, let's just watch that over again. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> this is why I got into VFX, by the way, in case you guys were wondering. So that is, that is the effect, and with that, that wraps up season one of 3DS Max Tutorials. Hopefully from this, if you've gone through every single one, which many of you guys have, to those of you who haven't, get on it. Get through them. Start from the beginning, go through all of them. Basically, hopefully it's rounded out a good knowledge for you guys to know how to work with production shaders and basically how to make something and put it into a, in, make a CG object and put it into a real shot, basically. Uh, we started out with, with still shots, and as I've shown you here, most things can actually be done with still shots. I'll, in future episodes, I'll get into how to do things with actual full-on video, but for the most part, um, VFX is all about, it's all problem solving. It's all about, like, you, you have an effect you want to achieve and you figure out how to achieve it. And so sometimes, in order to achieve you want, you have to do that full camera motion, you have to do the full thing. But for a lot of times, you don't have to. So it's, 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 you can save yourself a lot of time by figuring out ways to do shots with the tools you have. It's all about, because it's like, obviously, I don't know how to do everything in CG, but I figure out with the tools I have how to accomplish the effect and how to accomplish the shots. And so it's always, it's always compromised, it's always problem solving. So if you're into that kind of thing, I highly recommend this. Um, we'll get to, we're gonna take a couple weeks off here. Um, follow me on Twitter, I'll figure out, I'll, I'll basically be announcing when we get into season two. We'll come up with it. Also, tweet me any suggestions of things that you wanna learn how to do, um, and I'll try to figure out episodes that can go with it. Because season two is gonna be a lot less of this boring stuff and more into like individual effects, kind of more like this with the helicopter. Thanks for following along, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll have more stuff for you soon.